Hello everybody, welcome to Unscripted Access PlayStation Experience Edition. We are recording on Saturday, December 1st. 5th? <laughs> wow. 1st? <laughs> I, mi I mixed 1st and 5th together. <laughs> on December 5th? <laughs> it's just how boring PlayStation Experience is, it's messed me up. So, uh, we are in San Francisco. We were at the PlayStation keynote. And then we were on the show floor, and uh, let's talk about the keynote first. So let's talk about who we are first. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I, you guys should know who we are. This is uh, Nick McCamless. We have Brendan Milan. Hi. And then Anthony Tall. Hello. And so there we go, Anthony. Thank you. Um, Anthony's a guy who can eat. He yesterday he well he had no the, yeah he had beef three day, three meals no that was. Bremen had to be three, <laughs> three meals in a row, but Anthony ate a freaking whole cow, I and then he just ate a whole half of a 16-inch pizza. Did I now? <laughs> freaking Anthony's out eating us yeah, all. Yeah, I had a 16-inch. And how, how much do you weigh? I weigh like one, 150. Yeah, I weigh 200, and <laughs> Anthony's eating more than I can. He's a freaking monster. I had a 16-ounce prime rib yesterday. And a bit of bread, and a bit of mashed potatoes, and steamed broccoli, and, and two glasses of root beer. And folks, don't let that fool you. Don't make you make you think that he's yeah, like I'm some sure big there's somebody out there. He ain't said, fat. No. I'm sure someone out there would say, "Oh, that's no thing. I could eat way more than that." I'm pretty sure. Well, no. At 150 pounds. That being though. said, though, I don't know. Do you think guys think I would have been able to finish that roll cake that Bronson tried to eat? I think I think if you set your mind to it, you could have definitely eaten more than Bronson could. Watson was a disappointment. <laughs> he didn't even eat. He didn't even finish one, like not even one. Like that was that was pretty. I was embarrassed for him. <laughs> but anyway, was on camera. So we're at the kino, and we had amazing seats. So literally, the first two rows were for production, which is like Sony's head people. We were the row behind that, so we were literally in the third row. Yep, third row, front, front, front center. center. So we we literally could we literally had probably the best seats in the house. It was amazing. Um. So, what, what were you guys' thoughts on the keynote? I was bored, for the most part. No, the beginning, it started off really good. Oh, yeah, they got an amazing hook. Because yeah, they showed Uncharted 4, they didn't show new gameplay, it was a cutscene, but really what surprised people is it looks like they're going to have choices you can make in that Mass game. Mass Effect started, dialogue decisions. Because they, <laughs> they started the game, and then you had a decision to tell um, his uh, Nathan Drake's brother... <clears throat> where he's been, what he's done. So maybe there'll be various decisions you can make throughout the game, which looks pretty uh, promising. I don't know if... But no new gameplay was shown. I don't know if it's going to yeah. be choose your humor, or, you know, another... Or, or this will be one of those decisions will change the outcome of the story. Well, because if, if, it, it, is, really if it is If it is choose your dialogue humor, I'm actually okay with that, because... Got some really good humor in writing. Yeah, that gives it a little bit of replay value too because you want to try yeah. the other ones. So yeah, what if I say this? Know, what if I said this? Yeah, exactly. What if Nathan Drake said this? So that nice. makes it that'll make it interesting. I like I like what I saw there. And then they showed was it next one was Final Fantasy Seven or something? They showed uh, some gameplay of the remake of Final Fantasy Which VII. I liked it. It's, I'm not a big fan of Final Fantasy, but but as someone but like I imagine for the crowd that was crazy awesome. Well, I like, like it. You had Uncharted, and then you hit into Final Fantasy VII with actual in-game footage. That's going to blow your mind Yeah, the, the, the new gameplay. We already weird. knew it was coming. No, I mean, it was cool to see gameplay, but we already knew it was coming. But they also announced that the PC version uh, re-release, that came out today. So that's available if you can't wait for the remake. So there's that. There's that. I've never been a big Final Fantasy fan. Yeah, but Final so. Fantasy VII is probably... Oh, it, it will right, sell like, millions like, and like, millions of copies. Yeah, right next to Final Fantasy VI. Kind of thing. It is a <laughs> huge, huge, huge deal. Yep. They announced so the people. Yakuza franchise. Was like, I heard Anthony, he liked that. Oh, I do like that. Yeah, Yakuza 5 came Bronson out today, Bronson called right? me. Oh, it Bronson, comes out Tuesday. It Tuesday. comes out Tuesday. Bronson called me <clears throat> and specifically to just tell me how stoked he is for Yakuza 5, which tells me that was probably the most exciting thing for him. And the whole thing was that it's actually coming. And I'm actually very happy about that, too. Because I bought Yakuza 4 on, like, a bargain from Amazon for, like, $17. <coughs> awesome. Amazing game. Oh, well, you like it? Okay. I, I, I really <coughs> like it because then it's coming in. And I think that's the only mention the PS3 got the entire time. 
was because of I was coming. They were definitely like the first part of it was a good role. It was, was a what, very what good game. Kind of laughing was the PlayStation <coughs> Vita. They're like, and so the place it's like, yeah, the Vita. Vita, the Vita still is and still Vita. there. No Vita exclusives, though. They're all PS4 games, but are also coming to Vita. It's and like, they're and Vita. Titles. And he just held up his Vita. And, and Vita. Vita. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much like, yeah, we know this thing's yeah, dead. Yeah, we're, 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 kind of, we're kind of accepting the fact that, you know, this thing's a bit irrelevant. But for those who still have it, here you go. Yeah. And then they announced a couple new games Nino Cody 2. That Which got I, everyone stoked too. It looked, it looked good. Yeah. I, I never played Nino Kuni, but from what oh, I heard, it's not really my good. style of game. Well, like King of Fighters? King of Fighters was the King of Fighters. Fighters. I don't know how people going. I liked it. I mean, I, I'm a fighting what, game 14, fan, so. It's 14. 14. Yeah. From yeah. what Bremen told me, they put one out every single year until three years ago when they stopped and everyone got a little worried. Yeah. About it? Yeah, well, no, people, what happened was because it was SNK who did it before. Oh, no, it was Neo Geo, which became SNK, and they got bought out by this Chinese company, which is doing this new one, I believe. Uh, it was SNK Playmore. I, I don't remember the history of it, but now it's a Chinese company that has them, that has the rights to the King of Fighters, and they, they're totally, hopefully, the way I played so far, what I played so far was pretty good, I, I thought. So hopefully that gives it, you know, some hope. Your fans out there, some hope that hey, there's a King of Fighters, you know, game again. They're 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 trying to make it better. Hopefully we'll see. I mean, from what I played, like I said, don't quote me though. I I liked what I played so far. I think it would look. It, I think it can be. It can look better, like Street Fighter level better. Oh, what drove me nuts about that game was the alias scene was. So Awful. Well, you have to understand. King it was so bad. Here's the <laughs> King of Fighters is not a Street Fighter level kind of budget, so it's gonna. But happen. it was distracting. Yeah. yeah it, well, yeah. To you, Mister, I enjoy and lavish in my 4K. No, glory. but even then, like freaking games on PlayStation Four, they don't. <coughs> the alias scene. It was so annoying. To I just me. like to me. I just kind of look at it and just think that's just that's just. That's just one of the things you have to deal with when you're looking at a low budget game. I'm sorry, like graphics no, but, is is a but lot. But as of work. as the game itself, when I you know because I played King of Fighters, I love King of Fighters, so I you know I played it, I like it uh, so far, you know. Like I said, we'll see where it goes. You know, at least that's like a stepping stone for now. Like we'll see where like that's their first crack at it, and then we'll see what what happens after that. Yeah. You know, Street Fighter Five oh, was it? Yeah, Five yeah, was that there. Was awesome. Which looked good. They already revealed the the, the characters, the extra characters. That didn't get leaked. That didn't get leaked. <laughs> it's kind of funny how they said that. They, that no, I that, can't that, that guy's guy, name. That guy, no, the guy, that guy, that that Japanese dude that they had up there. Oh my goodness, you could tell he really loves making oh, this that's, game. That's freaking. He was so he stoked. Or he's or the no. guy. Who, yeah, he's the guy. Who, I think he's, he's the guy who started Street Fighter. He right? started Street Fighter. He was Fighter. so stoked <laughs> to tell everyone oh, about no, his yeah. game. I love a developer who just goes out there and just like has his. Endless beam of enthusiasm that he's so happy to show people his yeah, new that, stuff. Yeah, that's Ono. Ono is always like that. He's to, great. to the point to the point that they have to kick him out of the stage. Like, I know. Oh, he would have stood up there and out. talked forever about his game if he could. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it looked like. It was funny how they were like, "All right, <laughs> they, were trying, they were trying to get him up." It's like, "Wait, wait, I still have a couple more things to say." <laughs> yeah. Like, <"What> the? <laughs> then they got the PlayStation VR made a big splash there. The games uh, they were showing off were not, laughable, not, though. Yeah, not so much a big. That one, the PlayStation yeah. VR will be a huge failure because here's the thing: I think it's gonna cost probably two hundred fifty bucks, <laughs> three hundred dollars, and you look at the iToy. The iToy failed, and it was affordable. Why did it fail? Because the software sucked. That's the exact same thing that's happening with VR. All these games, like, yeah, they announced Ace Combat 7. That's that's a decent VR and game. And you could but, play Drive Club on the with the VR. Yeah, Drive Club, possibly. <laughs> but it's like, these other games, like, they had a freaking, it was, I was laughing. They look so generic. They announced this 100-yard golf or 100-foot golf or whatever. And you're actually, that trailer, actually, I do think that trailer is pretty humorous. You're a so huge that one, that mech right. robot destroying buildings and by playing golf, seeing yeah. it and hitting a golf ball, and destroying other me- like it's the most absurd concept ever. And then Double Fine was it has a few PlayStation VR games, just but like none of the PlayStation VR games I look at and say, hmm, that actually seems interesting. Like, why? Why is this? No, you're telling me no one out there that said, hey, we're doing a VR game like you know with the. Why we see like all these Call of Duty ones? Why not do it with that? Yeah, I, they need to do it with big blockbuster games like Gran Pro- Turismo. Fair enough, Gran Turismo. We'll probably have that. Well, yeah. no, they confirmed it. Yeah, it when they announced happen. it. So Gran Turismo, that's gonna be big for it. 
But, but you got these first person shooters that you know you want to give people a feel of the yeah. first person, right? Do the VR. <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. Here's my problem with PlayStation VR. It is. Um, it looks like a super conventional VR headset, which is you put it on your head and you have to use extra controls to make movement happen. That kind of stuff. It looks really conventional and bulky. And I looked at it, and it's just like, yeah, this isn't going to work. And then the software lineup was just like, yeah, this isn't really going to convince <coughs> anybody to jump on board. Like, if anything, I think HoloLens, Microsoft did a better job selling me on HoloLens. Well, yeah, when they showed it with Minecraft, that would be huge. Like, with everyone kids. was stunned yeah. when they looked at Minecraft. Because we got, because they actually had this gigantic special camera set up where we can actually see yeah. what the guy was seeing and we were like, oh my goodness, you can yeah. like, yeah. like imagine making like, you, you're you playing like say, Elder Scrolls 7 or something like that and you need, and you have HoloLens. Well, instead of like having to pull up a map, you can just use your coffee table to make a map yeah, of where you when, are. And then when they were showing that demo, like even though it didn't work for that one guy, that was an awful demo. They were throwing plates at each other. And I was like, this is what and, you're doing to show off. And the left yeah. dude's controls didn't work. Well, even if they did work, the fact that I just, things like that, like, it, it makes looks me think, like, like, who is heading this PlayStation VR? Because if you're like, like, oh, we're going to show off the VR, this is what we're going to show our potential customers is two digital characters throwing plates at each other and dodging. Like, that, like I, I would, said, hell look, no, that's looks, ridiculous. It looks like conventional old school VR. It, it doesn't really seem like the next step forward for at all. Like, I'm saying, hey, man. Like, you know that stuff you're talking about with shooters? That stuff, NVIDIA yeah. does that. They call it, uh, what, was, what did they call it? Uh, Game Force VR or something like that? Game VR? But NVIDIA's doing that, too. They but call with, it something. Yeah. I know, yeah, but, like, on the freaking NVIDIA drive, you know, I can look it up right now. But, but that's um, what I'm saying. Like, like, those guys are doing it, but, we're like, come on, people. Like, NVIDIA's <laughs> doing that. You could do, like, you could you're just... You're telling me none of you guys thought phone. about this shit, this stuff? You know? I have a GeForce experience. Oh. They'll tell me one's the driver. Like, oh, we're, we're just trying to be different. What the, I would, it looks like it looks like, VR, it looks like it looks like old school VR. Um, yeah, it doesn't say here. I'm not connected to the internet. Yeah, it is called GeForce. It's called G Vision. It, no, it's called GameWorks VR. GameWorks VR. Okay, got okay, gotcha. It's just ridiculous, man. Yeah. But yeah, I, I was like, might do a better job. I was like, yeah, this is the, definitely the event because this probably be the last big event for the public before they actually put that thing on sale. And I was like, those that software looked atrocious. Like I would, I wouldn't even consider it because that software is awful. Yeah, yeah. it looked really funny. early two thousands. But guess what? Santa Monica is working on one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, okay, I really want to hear what Sony Santa Monica has, and they announced that bullshit, retarded-looking VR game. I don't know it's what they're really working on. It's basically a taxi cab game with zombies. I mean, obviously, they've got to be working on something else. They don't have their whole entire studio working on that. But it's like, they always, every time that Sony is at an event like E3, they bring Kratos. And there's not been a God of War since Ascension. Ascension wasn't that good. And that's Ascension a, wasn't even made by Santa Monica. Yeah. It was consulted. They were consulting it. So yeah. it's like, what the hell have they been working on? They have not released a full-fledged <laughs> game since God of War 3. What the hell are they doing? I want a yeah. God of War on the PlayStation 4. That's what I want. It's it's going to become like that Final Fantasy 7 game. thing where everyone's asking, I want I want a freaking, you know... <laughs> and it's gonna take a long time before they even do it again. I just, I mean, I understand this is a whole part of like marketing and company. Or it doesn't even have to be God of War, just something new. That is new, just not. Oh, like that, no. Something new, <laughs> don't, the one that's something new Zombie. is the one that freaking the Team Ninja, got, the Team Ninja was doing that uh, samurai looking. It was like almost like Ninja Gaiden looking. It was game. cold. It was kind of. Uh, it looked uh, kind Neo, of. Mio, like, I think was something. Mio. Like yeah, it looks like Neo. Neo. Yeah, they call it Neo. It helped me remember because I was like, just think Matrix. And I ne Neo. Yeah, Neo. And I, thought, I thought I was like, is this the Dark Souls kind of game? Is it? Yeah, it's hard to tell what it is. But It looks like, like a lower budget Ninja Gaiden. But from what I've seen though, like from what they show, it looks like there's a it's a two player or maybe a multiplayer game. Yeah. Because they showed another player in there. So it could be that. We You never know. They announced the sequel to Don't Starve that has co-op. They'll strive to get. Yeah, a lot of indie games. Yeah, they had a strong focus on indie games, I and a lot of the games came out today. Like if you're a so fan, so Fat Princess came out today. 
Um, all these other ones, I don't remember all. I uh, see. The thing is, like the fat. I, I definitely want to try it out, but I was excited when they first announced it because I love the first Fat Princess. But they're totally different. Like the first Fat Princess was like an interactive MOBA style, and I loved it. I put a lot of hours into that game. This Fat Princess, I don't know. I need to give it a shot. She's, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. Overall, it's just very disappointing for me. I mean, if you're a huge fan of indies, it was probably a great show for you. Because there was indies out the ass, but they didn't announce... I don't think they announced one blockbuster AAA game that we didn't know about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... They didn't. Uh, they didn't announce a single one. And the actual, like, there were some good games that were out on the floor that we saw that we... That yeah, I was interested were, in, though. They were, but they, they were, like, kind of like E3 exhibits. Yeah, it was more E3. Were like, like, it was kind of like, well, we spent all this money on this exhibit. Yeah, let's just use it one more time so we don't feel as bad. <laughs> well, yeah, so, like, moving on from the keynote. Oh, right. Yeah, I don't want to, like, mention. It's just, the keynote... It, I understand that the previous generation of game consoles, there were so many sequels... That everyone's like, we need more IP, and then Sony was like, we have so much fresh stuff. But at the same time, it wasn't like the media was there. It was like a lot of fans, and a lot of fans were there because of like the past. And I just kind of felt there's so much freshness, there's so much new here that's hard for me to cheer because I don't know what these are. Like I understand if you're a fan of indie games, it's great for you, but I'm not. So I was like, eh. like yeah, what was I cheering for? I was cheering for Yakuza. I was feeling the hype of Final Fantasy VII and Street Fighter. Nino Kuni 2 was pretty awesome. But other than that, I can't remember much else. I mean, like, New Horizon? They that. didn't show Horizon at all. Yeah. They although showed they, nothing. Yeah, although they give you, like, little hints here and there, like, with, on the show floor. You yeah. Know, pictures of that game. But they showed, they showed nothing. They oh. showed nothing from the... They could have showed more of The Last Guardian. Because at E3, they didn't really show much. Uh, if you guys... <laughs> for you guys, you folks who like freaking... Uh, what you call it? The Taken King. You get to race now. And it was... Yeah, uh, that was kind of... That was, that was, that was kind of nice, but it's not like something that's going to make me... Ooh, I got to go back to Destiny now for it. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I it did make a couple of people cheer race, in that place, though. I would rather do it with cars. That's not the funny part, though, is people actually cheered for that. Like, they actually I know, because it. you think about it. Because Destiny has a huge fan base. Well, it's not just that, but when you've got your Scarf of stuff, how, who didn't smack the afterburner on that thing continuously yeah. just sped across the whole map as fast as possible? And so I kind of understand that concept. Yeah, there wasn't uh, really anything else that was really new, actually. It was just really mild. It's just, And I just sat <coughs> there, and I was just... That wasn't feeling, and you know the presenters, the executives that went up there, we're one of you. We're one of you. I raid in Destiny. I mean, that's like the well, Adam Boys is a definite. That was Adam Boys. Adam Boys is a hardcore gamer. Great. I've known a lot of people who have played with him online. So Adam Boys, I know he's legit. Okay. Yeah, but it's just Sean Layden. I don't know the CEO of PlayStation. I, it. it like I said, like part of me can't tell where they were being like genuine and part and and where they were yeah. playing marketing because yeah because they have to get excited about this stuff like talking about Call of Duty three I had a I had a feeling the crowd most of the crowd they were like uh yeah Call of Duty okay um yeah I, I just, just don't know yeah and Sean Layden was out there like the first five minutes you never saw him again. <laughs> It, it, I don't know, I'm just not sold on him yet. Ever since Trenton left, PlayStation's went downhill. I mean, yeah, we've had like, good my, games. My but... impression of him was, I know he was at PlayStation since the beginning. I think he said, I think he worked on the networking team. The, you know, could like the PlayStation networking, like hardware networking, yeah. not social networking. I think that's where they said he, he, he started 20 years ago kind of thing. But uh, when they introduced him at E3 for the first time, I thought, hello, Mr. Corporate Suit. I mean, I know that's not really a fair way to put it, but... Compared to the appearance of Jack Trent, it was... Yeah, Jack Trent were always wore a suit, too. Yeah, but, but Jack Trent was but he a lot would, he, he looked really chill. Like, And then, of course, we see... And then I see people like Phil Spencer, where he can go out and say he's a gamer, and I would actually believe it. Yeah. Very easily. I'd be like, yeah, I think he is, he is a gamer, whereas, you know, with some of the PlayStation people, I'm like, I'm not sure if they're doing this or if they're just putting on a show to try and make it look like... You know, play, you know make it look like... PlayStation Party, I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, I wasn't exactly sold on the way they <coughs> tried to present themselves. How about the show floor? You guys, uh... The show floor, there's only two floors. 
It's like a mini E3. Of all PlayStation stuff. A very, very mini E3. A very mini E3 of all things that can come to PlayStation. And here's the thing, like, what upsets me the most, and this is coming from, like, a media, I don't like to go to these things and then wait in line to play a game, because you wait, you stand, like, in line for an hour to play a game for, like, ten minutes. Some people, though. I understand, but it's like, I've never, like, since I started going to these events, I've always had appointments, so you just don't wait in line. They're just not media-friendly at this at all. They have, like, no one to interview, they do not take appointments, so you, if you want to play something, you have to wait in line, and you're standing in long lines because it's a public event, there's a shit ton of people there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so, like, yeah, I would have loved to play the Uncharted 4 multiplayer, but you'd probably wait two hours in line, and it's the same shit that people are playing at home right now. Yeah. And like this, they are? Shooting. Yeah, because there's the beta, the beta the, is this weekend for those who bought the Uncharted collection. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So... Street Fighter was near impossible to go play either. Oh, yeah, for the street. And then they had a lot of games that were already out. They had Battlefront, Black Ops 3, uh, all these games that were already out. And they still have lines. Because if you want to play something new, you're waiting in line a long time. Yeah, that was, I find it, fun. it was funny to see the Call of Duty like, damn, people are, you have this at home. But it's a <laughs> map pack. Oh my goodness, map so packs. shit. It's just, oh. But I mean, I guess, uh, they, 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 I, there were stuff on the show floor that I did want to play. I played King of Fighters, I like that one, uh, because I'm just because I'm a fan. And then, you know, I'd like to play Street Fighter, and the new characters are on there. Uh, the, what was the other ones? We got to play, like, for, I actually got finally got to play For Honor, which I like, I saw, you know, a preview of it back then, the gameplay, and now I actually got to play it, and I, I think it's pretty fun. So that, that's one other thing on my list that I'd be like, well, you know what, that, that's something I'm getting, you know, once it comes out. If they give me a freaking release date. <laughs> yeah, we played, we also, we checked out, now I know this is out, but I know neither Anthony and I are, had played it, we'd have to wait in line for it. Only thing we didn't have to wait in line for is Drive Club with the bikes. It was pretty cool. It was. It literally felt like Drive Club with bikes. It definitely bikes. felt like, you know, if you really like Drive Club, you could, you know, the, if, it's a worthwhile addition because obviously bikes are very different. I do, <laughs> I do have to say, though, that if you're going to do first-person bikes, good luck because it is first-person bikes. Like, I have never rode a motorbike in my life, but the amount of lean that you need to go around corners quickly just like oh man how do i not how would you how do you not get sick doing this how do you see where you're even going it's so hard in the weather too yeah like in third person room. view it's so easy but in first person view and you turn the weather on you're like this is why you don't ride bikes in the rain they don't come with windshield wipers and it's very slippery and it's just a bad idea in general yeah so like, i played dang. that we played for honor for honor i mean i kicked ass but, uh, I mean, it's fun. It's not a game I would buy. It's uh, fun. It's a, cool, like it. it's a cool concept, I like but it. I wasn't sold on it. I'll, I'll probably get that one for sure. I'll get King of Fighters Street Fighter. Pre, that was a pre-alpha build, though. Like, it's still, like, way... Well, yeah, long but ways to get. I understand how the game works and the, the idea behind it. It's just not... I don't know. If I had a lot more time to where I could play a lot of games, but my backlog's already... Ex so big right now. So like by the time that game comes out, I'm gonna have like twelve games that I, play, I still need to play. I was really bad at four honor because I only got like uh, three kills. Somebody, uh, somebody whooped ass in Battleborn. I wonder who that guy I was. was. A, who was that guy? Who was a beast in Battleborn. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about, about four honor. First, no, I was, yeah, I was a beast in. I went. No, I had nine kills yeah. and three deaths. <laughs> we won. We I won. Beast. No. Yeah, we won by but, but somebody, Yeah, we won. I mean, yeah, I was number one. In that honor, it's like, uh, <laughs> how do I say this? I think like it's, it's, it's kind of you can The actions of your character is based on your controls. Which direction you block is only three: left, right, top. Um, That's and, four. It's the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Oh, I thought there was only three because you're gonna choose. No, it's four. top left, right, but. That's kind of neat. Actually, Light no, you're right. It's, it's up and then bottom left, bottom right. You're right. Yeah, three. You have to, like, I would, like, get confused with my coordination because you have to coordinate the left stick of your character's movement and the right stick of where you want to block and attack. 
and do you want a strong attack, a light attack, or whether you're gonna parry, where you're gonna kick? I got or I I picked it. I, you know, I picked up and played it, and I, and I got it right away. I just had to you know time everything now. Yeah, um, it seems kind of like capture points and defeat people and. Well, that, that's the Get demo. There, there actually is a campaign mode to it. I heard. Yeah, uh, it's a pre-alpha build, so it's kind of like. It kind of but the more, PvP stuff will be kind of fun to, to interesting to see because in, when from what Nick was saying, that, he that, fucking he kicked that PvP asses. was actually really cool. I liked how that worked. I was like, how can you make a PvP game out of something like this? But that's gonna be really cool. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm not opposed. I'll give it another shot. I mean, it was fun. Don't get me wrong, but. Is it is it purchase worthy? I don't know. For me, it's gonna be because I I like, I like yeah. that already by the looks and the way to play this, I, I like that stuff. So yeah, I'll probably buy that one for sure. Um, like I said with Battleborn, that I don't know. I I'm up and down on that decision. Like I don't know if I like it or not. Yeah, I'm not sold on that game either. I like the concept. So there's like 15 different heroes you can choose from. They all like some of them shoot, some of them are more like melee style. They all have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, it definitely, as far as character moving, it plays a lot like Borderlands. It's from the same team, um, but it's more like cartoonish, and it's it feels a lot different than Borderlands in a lot of ways too. I really, really like the concept of it. Uh, not sold on it yet, um, but I'm definitely interested in checking it out and following. Yeah, with that. maybe maybe because maybe because it's still early in the yeah. game development, but I don't know, man. Like I don't, I can't. Put, I can't say that I really liked it or really hated it. It's, you know, I don't know what to say. I I, I, I had an easy time playing it. It's just, I don't know. So, something about first person, just staying in the first person all the time. I'm not a big first person shooter guy, so, you know. But Battleborn, yeah. to me, it's like, yeah, it's a, like a first person MOBA of sorts. Because it has mobile elements where you have, like, creep and you have, like, little minions going across and then heroes are fighting it off across the board and you have to complete objectives to get points because, yeah, we lost. I had 15 assists, which is apparently the most on the team. <laughs> we, we fucking, we, we won, sorry. sorry we won, finish. barely. We, we barely won. won. Yeah. We barely won. We lost the lead a couple times. But Battle War, <laughs> it's, it's kind of fun, but uh, I just don't, I don't think I'll get into it, though. Um, I mean, well, it's people who made uh, what you call Borderlands. Borderlands. Yeah. So maybe, maybe if we play a campaign, or maybe if we see a campaign mode. That... But yeah, they they announced campaign for. I'm just curious what they're gonna do. Like, how does that work? Like, is there a different campaign for every hero? Is it one campaign? You just alternate through heroes do you choose one hero to do the whole campaign oh, so i actually looked through the character log there's three different alliances so i imagine the campaign would follow each yeah. alliance i'm play. definitely interested in it i love I, borderlands is one of my favorite video game franchises of all time so i'm definitely gonna keep following through on it and see what they do yeah um, i don't know if we have any other games to <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, we played the King of Fighters 14. Yeah. Um, I'm not really in the fighting games. Nick beat me again. I did beat Anthony. Uh, but, I mean, I it was cool. I can't beat Nick. Like, I lost him at Forza. Fucking NBA 2K16, I lost to him, but... Um, yeah, like, in King of Fighters, I understand it's a lower budget, but the alias scene was so bad, it was driving me insane. Well, yeah, like, but yeah, I beat I Anthony. Said, yeah. Bremen met his future wife. Oh shit! <laughs> did you won the, between you and her? I actually, I won, dude. You won. I won. And here's oh. the thing, though, is that that's, that's like one of the things you face with a low budget game. Is I understand that you know, well, oh, man, all this alien thing in the PS4 era, this is kind of unacceptable. But well, even I, can, I would accept lower end visuals without the. It's just it's annoying to see all that shit just fucking all around the character. Oh, okay, yeah, it's just. When you have a low budget game, there's just kind of there's just graphical things you just have to put up with when they don't. Have yeah, to, they but when it's money. distracting, that's when it becomes a big when problem. It becomes, yeah, and the Especially thing I noticed I, it wasn't all characters looked distracting. It was like certain ones had really bad aliasing. Well, well, so maybe it's because it's early. Maybe we'll see. The, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, they did it. just announce it, so maybe they will work it out. But yeah. Yeah. So far, though, I, I, I'm I'm hoping that this is like a start. Like I said, like I said in the beginning of this podcast. I'm hoping this is the start of, you know, them rebuilding this franchise and making it better, you know, but we shall see. I mean, Street Fighter is kind of hard to beat right now because, you know, the popularity and stuff. 
the King of Fighters, this used to be like a, a match between King of Fighters and then Street Fighter. That's why they put SNK versus Capcom. They made that game for PS2. I don't know if you guys remember, but there was an arcade and it went out to PS2, which was Capcom versus SNK. And it was King of Fighters characters with SNK other other SNK characters versus Capcom characters and Street Fighter characters. Man, like I have never heard of SNK because all I heard was like Tekken versus yeah. Well, Cap like I said you Marvel guys, you, versus Capcom. Oh yeah, but I said you're not you're not you weren't really into the the, bat, the big fighting game scene back you know. Oh yeah. Where it was like all just Street back Fighter. when it was still huge. Yeah, it was like Street Fighter Two, Street Fighter Resurgence. Alpha. Yeah, all that stuff. So yeah. yes, something I do. So out of PlayStation experience, this was last night. Bremen, we, we, he brought his PlayStation 4, and Anthony brought his Wii U, and neither Anthony and I ever played NBA. Yeah, so, so Anthony and I played, and I whooped them pretty bad. Yeah, that's then, all 60-man access. Then I played, yeah, that's 60-man access. Then I played Bremen, and that's what we should have done, the 60-man access. Yeah, we should have yeah, done that. That game won. was so damn close. I should have won, but I ended up losing <laughs> no, to what happened, the time. What, you, yeah, you got, like, you thought you got the winning shot. Yeah, and then he but scored two seconds. to tie it, but then <laughs> I had the perfect shot with Steph Curry. Literally, three-point wide open, Right on the line, it was green, and he missed it. Very <laughs> rarely do I ever get green with Steph Curry wide open. And he still makes these ridiculous shots with someone all in his face, but he didn't make that one. That was the game. And then Anthony played Bremen. Anthony beat him. So Bremen played By two points. Still, <laughs> Bremen, you play a shit ton of NBA 2K, and you almost keep, got beat. Well, you got okay. beat by well, one of them. He did play the Detroit. Almost got beat. I did, did play the Detroit. I don't <laughs> care. I'll play as the damn freaking Browns, and you can play as the Patriots, and I'll still beat you in that end. I can promise Would you, you that. Know, how screwed up would the world be if the Browns beat the Patriots? That'd be How the, Browns are in my division, and I'd be the happiest guy alive. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to worry about them catching up. <laughs> so, so now See, Tom Brady but, lose to the Browns. But the funny the part best. about this whole experience is now Anthony's actually happy. You know, he's stoked. He's like excited to play basketball now. Or, or I like, like no to watch NBA, the no, game. Here's the thing: NBA Two K Sixteen. I love that game because. It's not like in the NFL where you're working so hard to like score. It's like in basketball. Oh, you're I always still score. Well, Football's it, my sport. Yeah, well, no, no, I understand that, but like yeah. in basketball, it's like you just score a little bit at a time. And in in NBA Two K Sixteen, when you score, everything that you did up to that point, all the passing, all the fakes, to get that ball into the hoop, that feels good. It, it felt like yet yeah, you did something to make that happen. And it wasn't a bunch of we're gonna throw this. Football pass. We're gonna let the computer randomly generate. Oh, that happened to whether, me. Whether you were gonna have butterfingers or not. There was a time he blocked the pass and then just chucked the ball across the damn court <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> Saying I pressed circle or whatever. I didn't press circle. <laughs> but the anyway, game was rigged. <laughs> but anyway, the, the 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 point that I was trying to make with like both of you guys, what, and I know Nick agrees with this too, is like what makes the game even better to play and makes you feel like you did something or accomplished something or, or exciting is the commentators. They make when you, I score, they give it to you like, yeah. you know, they make you feel, yeah. When I scored that, when I got the ball through that hoop yeah. for that winning one, they were like, he made it. And I'm like, I made it. <laughs> and we were just sitting there. All, you and I were both sitting yeah. there kind of shocked. And like, what, they made that one? <laughs> yeah, so that, that's, what, that's what adds to the excitement of the game. That's what makes it more exciting because you, you know, you actually hear it from the actual game telling you, oh, wow, you know, that was an awesome shot, or you made this. You know? And then, then there's moments like that that happens in that game, where if he would have made that three-pointer, like Nick would have made that three-pointer to win the game, I, they, they, they would have gone nuts, too. Yeah. You know, the, comm the commentators would have gone nuts, too. But it, you know, that's the stuff that I like about that's why I mean, That's why I like playing that game so much, because it makes you feel like, wow. I, I love, love how it's like, like, Yeah. The, the commentary is very responsive. Yeah, they can be uh, like... I a, like that. It's yeah, it makes a, Madden look really bad. Well, Madden, it's like, <laughs> he's got it to the 30, to the 20, to 10, touchdown. Oh, my, what a great play that was. <laughs> yes, Jim, yes, Jim, that was a great play. You know, they, they, they got great worth. You know, the, the, the rhythm was perfect. And, you know, it was just a really good drive. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the, Jim it's it's like Phil Sims. Your guys is a highly experienced commentator making Madden a lovely place. Yeah, Jeez. but, it, but Meanwhile, but NFL 2K5, <laughs> NFL 
It's called NFL 2K5, right? Yeah, NFL 2K5 has a bunch of radio commentators that did a better job than those two at Madden. <laughs> Jeez. I'm telling you, man, that shit, that stuff adds up. Like, little things like that add up and it makes it exciting. I do exciting. have to say, though, in NBA 2K16, they need to uh, work on the set yeah. where those guys sit because it looks it looks And old. their flappy lips. Yeah. Yeah, the flappy lips. I mean, the, oh, man, that is like, watching St- St- Stephen Curry's flappy lips, I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> it was comical. You know, but, you know, there's always, there's always some kind of problem. But for what it's worth, like I said, that game, that's why I can't stop playing that game. That's... You know, for one, I love the sport, and then the other thing is that it's just, it's just a fun game to play. When, especially when you're playing with friends, that's even better. You know, yeah, it's competitive. Yeah, yeah, you put us all in one team against a legendary computer, and see, and we're just gonna fight each other for not passing the <laughs> bloody ball. As long as, as long as I'm controlling Steph see, Curry, I knew that's it. All that I was gonna say, <laughs> some fucking Nick is like, I'm just, just gonna. I'm not oh, changing <laughs> Steph Curry. <laughs> he's, he's just gonna keep. When Nick beat me, Steph. Steph and Curry have like half the points. Whenever he gets kicked out again, Nick is like, why are you substituting yet? And because this whole he team just, sucks except without Stephen Curry. He freaking just subs Curry back in every time. He don't get rest. <laughs> no rest. Bullshit. Who needs rest? Cold the funny thing is, that, the thing is that you kept him in the game for a while. His energy only went down by a quarter. Only a quarter. Yeah, it's called stamina. Yeah. <laughs> he can play the whole damn game. They get timeouts. He can sit on the bench for a little bit, uh, catch his breath, and get back in the game. Oh, so check this out. I posted this on my Twitter and Facebook. I have never in my entire life, all my existence, met ever anyone with my same last name. <laughs> it's McCamless. It's not like Smith or something that would like a lot of people would have. So we're in line the for spelling, mind you. Yeah, so we're in line for Battleborn. And it wasn't even me that noticed it. It was we. I was going through line, and they take your badges and scan them. And then the few people behind us, the old guy says, "Oh, McCandless. He's another McCandless." And I heard that, and I looked. I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> we had the exact same last name. Spelling it. And all. I was like, "Okay, I have to take a picture of our badges." So I did. I took a picture of it. I sent it to my parents. Oh, I sent it to my entire my parents and my siblings. And then my brother was like, "Yeah, mom had." Our mom has a secret son. <laughs> I was like, you guys were the same. You were like, about the same age too. I was like, the, shit. Yeah, you, you so, other, I think I need to get a flight to North Carolina. To figure yeah, out what's going you on. and the other McCandless were about the same age, and I'm like, whoa. Okay, what happened here? Yeah, I was like, I need to catch a flight to North Carolina right now. <laughs> okay. Please explain. Yeah, this needs to be out real quick. Yes. That was, yeah, that was the weirdest super, stuff that super happened. Super weird. Here. <laughs> That's super weird. <laughs> it's very rare to I mean, I if it was like McCandless, it was just spelled differently. Okay, you know, but no, this was identical. It was like the actual. The yeah, and it's stuff. just so weird. Like it's one thing. It's like in like school, you find out there's a McCandless because you have like a freaking thousand people at your school, or if it's a college, even more. But we're in a line at PlayStation Experience, and just so happened to be five or six people behind me. Yeah. <laughs> what is the chance of that freaking happening? So it's not like McCandless is a common last name. Yes, it's, I mean, it's not, like, something super rare, but it's Shit. not common at all. It's... I mean, yeah, if you have the last, same last name Smith, yeah, a billion people have that last name. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But McCandless, there's not many. So I thought that was really interesting. So, yeah, I had to take a picture <laughs> like, of my It was just... mind blow, and it was like, dang. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, overall, I don't know. I'm just really kind of disappointed. We didn't get a PlayStation experience last year. But this year, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of disappointing. They don't really, it's, going there as the media, you really have no incentive over a normal attendee. Other than being, we were able to get into the keynote before everyone else. So there was a guy behind us. Yeah. He, he was there since, like, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And by the way, he was super morning. excited. And, and there was a couple people that were 11 p.m. Bef- the day before. We just showed up, got our badges, took the elevator up, and we got the best seats. <laughs> <laughs> so other than that, the media, I mean, there's not really a benefit. I just wonder how they felt. I wonder what, how, I wonder what they thought about the keynote, which is... When you're a PlayStation fan, why are you a fan of PlayStation? Just because of stuff like Crash Bandicoot? Yeah, but that guy was going crazy anyway for most of those announcements. You notice that? That guy was freaking losing. He was just like, he was calling every. I was right in front of him. He's literally calling everyone. He's like, oh my gosh, 
I'm like living my dream right now. Like I'm looking at the stage. Like he's like freaking out. And I know that. I know. I know that feeling. I get it. I remember the first time I went to E3, but he was just on a whole nother level. Like yeah, I just, I just he was a definition of a PlayStation fanboy. Like just hearing his conversation, I'm like, oh my gosh, this dude's nuts. Uh, so yeah, it's just like with a lot of those analysis, I just gauge it based on fan noise. So Final Fantasy VII, that was probably the that was biggest a big, one. That was, that was a the big one. Yeah. But then when they got to Call of Duty and all the new stuff, everyone's like. Uncharted was pretty big too. Oh yeah, yeah. Uncharted for sure. Well, is well, huge. It's, that's what started off yeah. with yeah. the beginning. So yeah, Uncharted is huge for <laughs> sure. But they had a lot of games they could even if they weren't going to announce anything. They had a lot of big games they could have shown. They could have shown more Horizon. They could have shown more of the new Quantic Dream game. They could have shown Gran Turismo. Cause they still haven't shown Gran Turismo gameplay. They just announced it. They showed like a CG trailer. They didn't show gameplay. Or they say it's all in engine, but I want to see it actually like you driving. Yeah, you know. No, no, it wasn't much, man. I, I was, I was disappointed too. I was like, it. We were here basically. We were already home early, right? We went home early. Yeah, we left at like six o'clock, and they were open till ten. They're still open now. They're open for another <laughs> two hours. <laughs> I would have lost my damn mind if we were still there. Yeah, they were open for two hours. I would have seen everything I wanted to. So why go tomorrow? Like, I just look, I look, like, here's the thing. For me, it's a, it's a struggle because this is my first time at PSX, and I just never have been that passionate about Sony. I really like Gran Turismo, but they don't, like, Gran Turismo is not exactly what you call something that gets the crowd cheering. It, it, if I'm honest. Well, it's a huge seller. It, it is a huge seller, but it's not something that you would get the crowd, like, pumped up for. Because... Uh, you know, as much as I would like to say, hey, yeah, there's this, yeah, the, the you know, the Nissan GTR has like a uh, whatever liter V6 engine with twin turbos, most gaming dudes probably don't care about that. Um, uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, I, I, I've just never been that passionate about Sony. And with this generation of game consoles it's just like multi-plat 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 and i know if you are an hey. indie fan you will be happy with all the indies they showed but the same but i'm not but i'm not into indies indie Neither games am I. if if i am into indie games it's automation the car tycoon game that i've already dumped 95 oh, hours oh but in. there's one person among us who probably likes those oh indie yeah games. i'm sure bronson <laughs> will love it okay bronson will go out to every single indie booth and interview all of them uh, because he's an indie guy, and he knows the questions to ask them, whereas, well, you know, I, I don't. But, like, if it was, like, Automation, the Car Tycoon game, which I dumped, like, 95 hours into the early access, and it's not even finished, the game's not even finished development yet. Like, that, like, I just get very, like, it has to be a very specific indie game. I mean, I'm not saying I didn't see anything that I liked. There was stuff that I was like, man, maybe I'll play it. Yeah. But I know... Really, um, in reality, I know if I probably can't get it for free, I'm more likely not going to play them. <laughs> no. You know, it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, it, some of the indie games that came out, that I, they didn't really interest me as much. Not, you know. Yeah, we got those two PlayStation Vita games for free. Oh, yeah. And a Vita. Yeah, the problem is I'm the only one here with a Vita. And I haven't turned, I don't even know, my Vita could like stop working for all I know. I literally have not turned my Vita on in probably two and a half years. Yeah. Wow. You uh, playing this Zelda Vita? I don't know. <laughs> I just have it chilling, doing nothing. Because I need that Vita so what, like, I can play NBA 2K while I'm on the toilet. There you go. The <laughs> remote play. <laughs> Pretty much, it's a good PlayStation 4 accessory. Yeah, that's what it basically is, right? <laughs> It's basically just a giant accessory to the a giant expensive accessory to the PS4. Yeah, um, other than that, it's just yeah. Honestly, just there wasn't anything much that I. You know, Plus, I don't portable gaming is just not my thing because if I'm playing games on my home, I don't. If I'm out, that's because I'm out socializing or I'm busy. I can't. Like I have a car, so like Bronson makes perfect sense. He's on the bus two to three hours a day. Of course, if you're doing public transportation, it makes perfect sense. But I can't play games while I'm driving. I can't play games while I'm working. I it's like I I would never play portable games. Yeah. If I'm at home, I'm gonna play on my PC on my 4K TV. 
make it look all amazing. But yeah, just and there's no games for it. That's I mean, there's games, but they're not the it's software. All, it's all yeah. cross by with PS4. Yeah, that's the other thing too. It really went downhill. So yeah, the Vita Vita is pretty much like it's 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 a dead device. We mentioned its name. It counts. Oh, they mentioned it's I still think I, I still think it's pretty funny where it's like they mentioned the PS3 only once and there's only for Yakuza 5 which comes yeah. out on Tuesday well the P- they shouldn't be mentioning the PS3 well they did because it was Yakuza 5 well yeah other than they that they did announce Zero for PS4 which they were kind of blatantly honest about the fact that they, yep there's woman in this game <laughs> <laughs> There's what? Woman in Yakuza Zero. In Yakuza Zero. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, women. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta have the women. It's like the only game that did that. I'm like, okay. Yeah, talking about that's how you make money. <laughs> in Yakuza Four, you can run a hostess club. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, there. Yeah, I, I, I don't ever remember anything else in that place. The, the experience, PS experience that I. That makes it, you know, it stands out that I, I'm like, whoa, I want to Here's try the thing, like, 2000, like, 2016 is gonna, is probably going to be the best year ever in PlayStation history, but that keynote would made me think, wait, is it really going to be the best year in PlayStation history? Because it didn't really feel like next year is going to be that Well, awesome. I mean, for the E3 like, stuff that they showed, it's going to be good, yeah. Be great. We have Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. We have Uncharted. We have Horizon. Mm-hmm. The Quantic Dream Game. I mean, uh, Gran Turismo Sport is Gran Turismo the Sport same. is supposedly coming out. Yeah. So there's really. So they have a good lineup. Yeah, but for the for the stuff they showed at E3 and whatever they mentioned that yeah for next for the next year right not yeah, yeah next, next year. year you know so good for them but as far as the stuff that they showed over here yeah and they're gonna be spread out so Uncharted comes out in March Ratchet and Clank comes out in April. So that's two big releases for Sony in the early half of the year. Yeah. So, that's good. And then we, I'm sure there's going to be more games we don't know about yet. But yeah. I was really bummed out not to see more about Horizon, because Horizon looks really good. I'm just bummed out. There's just like, it just... Uh, <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm trying to, I need to figure out how to put this first. I was expecting kind of like more big stuff. To be talked about, like what when you open on a Charter Four and Final Fantasy Seven remake, and you know announce stuff like Nino Kuni, I was like, man, that's pretty awesome. And then you know, and it's like so many small little projects. I, I guess, I guess it's a shift in the gaming industry's priorities where they want to. They're focusing more on smaller projects now. Well, and the like, super big ones. But honestly, I, but I think the problem I'm, is it's hard for me to get hyped about these smaller. I honestly, think a big part so of it is so they had E three, they had the Paris Games Week. I think this is just more. It's like a PAX, but just for PlayStation. It's, it's like, not even that good of a. PAX. It's just like it's like not not really too many new announcements. It's just something they put together because if you're you can't unless you're in the industry, you can't go to E three. Yeah, you can go to PAX or Comic Con, but you can't go to E three. Yeah. So it's just like a way of giving back to the gamers. I don't think it's like a huge like announcement event for them. I think they're gonna save that for E three. Cause think about it, having three, they have to have stuff for E three. They have to. E three is their biggest event. That's of the true. Year. So they're probably saving all the good stuff then for the next E three thing. Is what you're saying? Probably. Because everyone watches E three. It's the I, biggest media event. Just gonna be now good I don't good. think E three will exist in probably about six or seven years. I think E three will be done. Because yeah, I think they're I mean, all going to do their own stuff. Just like Apple. Like yeah, Apple yeah, used to be at CES and stuff, but now Apple just does their own shit. The th- yeah, when you think about it, it's kind of... It comes Nintendo's like, pretty much... I mean, they have their Nintendo booth, Direct. but they have like, Nintendo, Nintendo Direct. Does, yeah. I think it's an I think it's an advantage to a company when you do your own thing because you think about it, you pick a week when there's no news and when you put out big news, guess what? That's all they talk about is you. No. Instead of you having to compete against everyone in the same convention, all that week is going to talk about is you. Like when they announced the PlayStation Four, the no. only thing that could, could compete with it was you know the Titan, the, the GeForce Titan. Yeah, that's but PC that, but, gaming. That's yeah, different. but people still talked about the PlayStation Four, and all week it was all PS Four. You didn't have to talk about Xbox. People weren't really talking about Xbox or Nintendo. It was all Sony that week. Yeah. And, you know, same with Microsoft. They took a week to announce the Xbox One, and everyone took that and spent the whole week hating on it because it was a terrible console when they first unveiled it. Um, and Nintendo does Nintendo Direct, like, once every few months. 
Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm with Nick on this one. Where yeah, I think they're saving all the, their actual good stuff. They're they're holding back for when E3 because I mean it's only like what it's already December. Yeah. Yeah, E3 is only a little over six months away. It's only six months away. See, so and that, may, that would make sense why they would probably. Actually, it's about it's just about exactly six months away. Yeah, so that would be and that a would lot be a reason. more people watch E3 because. Yeah. You know, so they're they they're sure they're that's what it is. They're holding back to show the I really just good stuff think that, later. Yeah, like I said, I have never really been that big of a. I've just never been that passionate about PlayStation. So it's just not seeing all this. I'm just uh, not feeling, not feeling the hype. Well, for me, like I said, like I was telling most people, I play any game on whatever platform you put it on as long as I can play it. I'm fine. If they're good, obviously, I'll, yeah, even better. Yeah, I mean, I can understand it being an exciting event if it's someone's first gaming convention ever. Like, it's the first thing they've ever, first gaming convention they've ever been to. Yeah, I can see that. Which is probably what that dude was going through. I think part of my problem is my first gaming thing ever was, was E3. Was freaking E3 with a limo? Yeah. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> So now everything's kind of at this point, just nothing really impresses me anymore. Yeah, what, like, when your first convention is that crazy E3 trip. The next E3 had limo service, too. I know. This wasn't as crazy. I know, but the first E3 with limo service and two women. Three. And three. Oh attractive my. women. Three attractive women and limo service to E3 at the age of 17. What <laughs> gives, man? <laughs> That this is back when Bronson had just joined, so I didn't know what to think. I was just, I'm like my impression was just like who, how, what, how did he do this? How did he do this? He's a pimp back in North Carolina. <laughs> Probably. I can't explain. Like I don't know a single seventeen year old who actually manages to pull that together. He pulled that together and while still in high school. Yeah, he started Damn. young. They started young over there as pimps. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, those were the days. A lot has changed since then. A lot has changed. Since <laughs> a then. lot. Of, you know what? It kind of sucks because I felt like I showed up to E three just a little late. Like my first E three was really hyped up. Yeah. It was. It, 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 but the thing was that this past summer, like John was super stoked the whole time. But to me, having seen like the year before, I'm like, dear goodness, it's kind of empty here. It just feels. It just feels drained. Yeah. It feels drained. It feels tired. It's just like I yeah. think the idea of conventions probably won't be around in a few years. That's like seven, eight years. It's probably just gonna same. It'd make more sense if you could just charge and do like an online type thing where you can access these early demos and stuff like that and just play them. You can access much more people. Or do you don't have to run a whole convention center. And everyone can access it. Or even if you just want to limit it to the media, you can still limit it to the media. You just give it to their PlayStation IDs only for the media. So you can still do everything. You can still do the press conference online, or you can have a physical press conference. But you don't need to do, rent out a whole convention center for three days to do E3. You can do all that stuff digitally and online. And I think that's what's going to happen. Because E3, when the first year I went, that was four years ago. I've been to four E3s now. It was so much better. Like, so much better. Things changed a lot. Changed a lot. And it's funny, people I talked to that went for years and years before me, they said it was even better back then. It just really went downhill. Yeah. I mean, I just don't know if that's something, like, I would... I don't know if that's something I should worry about in the gaming industry because it's just kind of like, you know, get hyped. Like, you're supposed to be hyped up and excited that these companies are, like, fighting to the teeth and, you know, they're making games and they're doing all this stuff, and then I watch stuff like this, and I'm like, is it because I'm not, like, caring about this? Like, is it because I'm not interested in this, or is it just because it has gone downhill? Because I just... Where's that hype? Where's that excitement? Well, I... A lot of it comes on the leaks, too. Like, for E3, uh, a lot of things are leaked before. No, a lot of things... Yeah, that's the other thing about E3, too. Because you remember this past E3, everything just got announced before E3 happened. Yeah. And I was just like, what's the point of announcing anything anymore there? Yeah. It's like, you're, you're just there to play a game. You're not really there to, like, be like, ooh, what are you going to announce this time? Like, when I think of, like, top E3 moments, I always look at the, the Legend of Zelda announcement at E3 2004. When they announced Twilight Princess for the first time. This is before it even had that name. And all the Nintendo fans in there just completely lost their minds. And I thought that was like, I thought that 
is why E3 is awesome. And then I look at now where everyone's just like, I mean, Sony's conference, it's still like cheering and that kind of stuff. But at Microsoft, it's just, you know, good job, Microsoft. Corporate loud, corporate clap. Yeah. Not bad, nothing bad about that. You just, it's just kind of hard to stand up in your chair and just cheer and just scream off the top of your lungs with all the hype. Like, sitting by Bronson, like, he like he loves Halo, and watching Halo 5, it was just kind of him more, it's like, wow, that looks pretty awesome, instead of him standing up and just, like, going, hell yeah. Just like, man. Yeah. I don't know, man. It, it, I, I still, uh, in some ways, I still enjoy going here to the PSX, but I, was, I still had a good time. Yeah, I mean, it's cool, it's just not what I was expecting. I was expecting a little yeah. bit. I mean, I wasn't expecting E3. Well, yeah, I was just expecting a little more. No way, it's a lot smaller. It's only like three floors, and the top floor is a stage. That's yeah. it. And the floors are really small. Yeah. They're uh, really but, small. The know, two floors together is probably half of one of the E3 halls. And E3 is two halls. So I'd say it's probably about a quarter of the size of E3. Yeah, but... Now, I mean, it's just PlayStation. I get it, but... I mean, you know, for, for the positive side, there's like... So there was some pretty cute girls over there. We should have interviewed that one chick from that <laughs> one game, was it? The, the stories, stories or whatever. She That's was always really cute. attractive women yeah. at these things because you have marketing and PR women, <laughs> which yeah. they're gonna favor attractive women. Yeah, that's my favorite too. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> but that's with anything. Yeah, that's that's part of the deal right there. <laughs> but I mean, it pays to be attractive. I don't care what anyone says. It pays to be attractive. Yeah, it's true. As much as you hate to hear it, people, it's true. Yeah. You know? You may resist, but you're looking. Well, that's why you have act, like, that's why you have the actors and actresses out there, you know? Some of them can't act worth a shit, but they're attractive. Oh, Megan Fox. What? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> I she heard, can't act to save her life. I heard you. Her acting is awful. She can act one hell of a sex scene, though. Yeah, I'm sure she can. <laughs> Redman would know. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I don't know. Poor Anthony. Yeah, poor me. <laughs> good thing Jonathan... Poor. I mean, good thing John isn't here. Anthony would have probably given up by now. Yeah, would have given up. He's like, you know what, John, Redman, you guys... Like, hire someone else to take you home. I'm <laughs> you guys can take an Uber back. This, home. Is, a, this is an AO rated room now. I'm out of here. <laughs> you guys can take an Uber back to Reno. Oh, <laughs> man. Imagine that bill. It would be cheaper to fly. Oh, it would be a lot cheaper. Yeah. Um, yeah, just not. I get, like, I, I sit down and I think if this had been Xbox experience or Nintendo experience, I probably would have been a lot more stoked about it. Because with Xbox, I mean, I, 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 I would look forward to Halo and Forza just fine and, you know, Gears of War and that kind of stuff. And Nintendo, hell yeah. Because Nintendo is just one of the things they build on is nostalgia. So there's going to be a bajillion Zelda fans and they're going to have a Zelda game because everyone wants to play a Zelda fa- game. Because, like, at E3, Nintendo's booth is, like, consistently crowded. Like, Nintendo's booth is consistently crowded at E3. Whereas, you know, the Microsoft, well, would you like to play Forza for a fifth time? Sure. I'll get beat by Nick for the fifth time in a row. <laughs> <laughs> sure, let's do that. <laughs> or, hey, let's let's play Gears of War again. Uh, uh, we are secretly <laughs> watching a football game. Yeah, we're well. watching the North Carolina Clemson game. I grew up in North Carolina. I'm a Tar Heel fan. And it's literally like a scoring war right now. Carolina was like really close, but yeah, now but they're down two it's possessions. 40, but it's but 42 to 30. Yeah. yeah, they've been scoring back and forth. Like, they literally had the ball for like a minute off the clock, and they scored a touchdown. Dang. But, yeah. I, um, guess, uh, I guess that covers PSX. It's not much because there, there really isn't much. There really wasn't much that we could really talk yeah, about. Yeah, I feel like if you like live in San Francisco, I could see coming, but like it's definitely not if worth fan, traveling if across the country. If you're a fan country. of PlayStation, I can see you like Oh, yeah, it, if you're a diehard PlayStation nut, absolutely. But, it's probably like, your heaven, because the guess, guy behind us was a diehard PlayStation, and sound, I literally thought he was going to pass out. I guess when you go to something as big as E3, I guess your expectations would never be the same. Yeah, I've been to four <laughs> E3s, I've been to several CES, I've been to PAX, I've been to Comic-Con, and this one's just by far the worst event I've been to. Like, I prefer CES over this. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm... I still have some hope, maybe, that maybe next year it'll be better. Uh, maybe. I just feel like, you know what? I'm hoping maybe at least. PlayStation is just, just not my thing. I mean, I, I like the PS4. I, li I really like what they have PS4, and you know what? Like, I, I may talk, I may sound like I talk better about the Xbox One, but when I think about it, it's like, oh wait, the Xbox One does a lot of great things outside of games. Like, the streaming to Windows thing. Yeah, I can stream from my Xbox One to my Windows 10 laptop. That's pretty amazing. But then I th sit down and think, but it was Sony who has, like, this giant games list that's coming next year. And I think, yeah, that's, that's why I bought a game console. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Well, I'm still a console guy, too. I, I'm not all the way... Oh, then again, I can't say that, really, because I, I play whatever on whatever platform... You know, so that'd be like, uh, just like I said, bring out the games, as long as they're good, I'll play them whatever platform you put them on. Okay. Yeah, this is also their only, the second PlayStation experience they've done. I think PlayStation Experience will be their platform for big announcements, although I think they'll have to change it when they do it. Like, December, like, if they stop doing E3, December will not be a good month to make those announcements because you want to announce stuff for the holiday season. You don't want to announce stuff in the middle of Game of the Year Awards either. Unless yeah. it is during the Game of the Year Awards show, like at the Game Awards. Yeah, you'll want to... They'll probably change it over to, like, June and then drop E3 eventually. Or E3 might be, like... they. I can see them doing, like... Leaving the convention center open, I I don't know. Eventually, it'll go away. But I could see Sony like two or three years from now say, "Okay, well, our press conference is exclusively a PlayStation experience now." And then Xbox will do the same. And then yeah, Xbox will definitely do it. Nintendo's already has Nintendo Direct. Yeah, but they'll have like the physical thing, like an actual Nintendo Direct's an online show. Or yeah, but that's when their announcements happen now. Right. Yeah, but I could see that. I could see them. Yeah, I just like I said. I think the idea of these conventions... Conventions is just a very dated thing. I mean, before the internet, it made perfect sense. But yes. I just think conventions... They're gonna go away. You can literally do online conventions now. And you have more people watching. More accessible. People don't have to pay for travel. The only problem I see with the online is that... Companies still struggle with trying to handle the viewer numbers... Without their servers being overloaded... I don't know why they still haven't figured that out in this day and age. Yeah, they need to figure that like, out. You, I don't know if this is still true, but you can't really watch a press conference at home on the internet without it stuttering like crazy. Yeah. Uh, but that's about it. Yep. Sorry, not much to talk about there. It wasn't did... really much to talk about to start with. It's basically the keynote and that's it. Yep. Keynote and some of the games you played, which, you know, some I liked, some I, I'm alright with. Actually, there was one other game I, I saw that um, the Umbrella Cor Umbrella Corporation I forget what it's called Umbrella Corps yeah. yeah that one was like a Resident Resident Evil I didn't get a chance to play it it looks like a shooter obviously <laughs> so I don't know yeah. exactly what that game is I know it's Resident Evil related um I might check it out tomorrow actually that that might be one of those things I'll check out tomorrow. Yeah. If if and when we go back there, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that's it, right? I mean, I don't think we have yeah, any questions or comments. Yeah, that concludes everything. We've covered it all. I don't think we have questions and comments from the last episode. Oh right, this is unscripted. That's right. <laughs> uh, I forgot you this forgot is unscripted. That you're hosting your own show. This I forgot time. this is unscripted. Man. I was like, yeah, we're talking about PlayStation Experience. I forgot this is, yeah, this is unscripted access. So by the way, we should post this tomorrow. Instead of waiting, because now we, what, you wait till Monday to but post I have to make it? the picture first. Well, yeah, we'll do it tomorrow, though, because we'll have more time. Yep, tomorrow. but, okay, I guess that's no it. No comments? Well, let <laughs> me load up the page. Yeah, go ahead, and by the way, we launched our new website, so please be sure to leave comments on what you think, if any improvements you would like. Um, it's also mobile friendly. The mobile site's still being worked on, but check out the mobile website. It looks really good on your phone, so be sure to check that out. And uh, do you see any bugs? Feel free to let us know. Yeah, let them know. Let me let us know so we can get them fixed. Yes. If something bugs you in the site, just let us know. 
Holy gosh, bro, boy. Pants are back. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Run! Run! <laughs> Freaking Bremen. Alright, guys. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, leave comments. Uh, let us know what you guys think. We're out. Bye. Laters.